Because when you do hard things, you then are fortified and reinforced for the inevitable hardship that life is. Because all of life is hardship with brief moments of bliss, my friend. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey friends, welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. My name is Bedros Coolian, and today we're going to kick off an awesome episode and really dive into why I started this show. And if I do the show right, you're going to get a lot of lessons that men learn too late in life. And what I want to do, though, as I kind of go down the journey of why I started this show, who it's for, what the intended purpose is, and how we're going to serve humanity with this show, and how we need to work as a tribe, as a community, right, you and me together, um, you're going to learn a lot of lessons that I believe men learn too late in life. Understand that this is going to be a longer show than my normal ones, but I've also heard you guys say, especially in the comments on YouTube, that you, you, you always feel like you're left, you know, wanting more. And so this one's for you. If the 25, 35 minute shows always leave you wanting more, hopefully I can uh, satisfy you here with the longer episode. So let's just dive into it, guys. Um, listen, I started this show and it's actually the first time after so many, you know, what, six and a half, seven months of doing this. I'm actually a little nervous talking about this. Um, when I started this show, I had kind of two two intentions behind it. Intention number one was to address what's happening in our world. I wanted to be the voice of what you're feeling as a man inside because I could tell that I was suffering in silence and I had my life put together. I mean, think about this. Yeah, 2020 happened, the pandemic, and businesses especially took a big hit. Um, and I was not impervious to that. My businesses certainly took a hit. Uh, we have bounce back ability, and so we've got a great team here, and we fought tooth and nail to get our business back on track, and we did. It took a good year and a half to do that. But in that time, I saw that there was this acceleration just during that period of the pandemic and just after this acceleration of the deterioration of the fiber of masculinity. And I'm not talking about alpha male and sigma male and beta male, none of that bullshit. I'm talking about just a man who would feel, who would feel good about himself in any other position now felt like he doesn't know what his identity and role is in terms of society. Am I supposed to open doors for women? Am I supposed to say please and thank yous? How am I supposed to react to the pronouns? What if I feel like I don't want these things impressed upon me? Do I have a voice to even say that? Or if I do, am I considered a bigot or a racist, right? Even though in your heart you know that you're not, you were made to feel like unless you walk this really fine, narrow line, you could be considered a terrorist, a domestic terrorist. You could be considered a misogynist. You can be considered someone who is insensitive. You could be considered toxic. And I realized that this was only accelerated post 2020, but it had started decades earlier with the erosion of the fiber that is man. And so I started this show because one, I wanted to address what you and I are feeling. I feel like I'm in a place financially uh, with my level of personal growth that I've had with the friends and network and connections that I have that I've got a platform big enough to share what I and you are feeling and to go, hey, maybe, maybe there's a different way to look at things. Maybe what I'm feeling and wanting as a man to want to make a lot of money, to be aggressive, to be rich and successful, to be fit, uh, to be proud, to be confident. Maybe that's not bad. That's not toxic. That's not hyper masculine. I don't even know what that term means, but I hear it thrown around. Maybe that's just how I'm supposed to be. Maybe being a tribe of men, being in a brotherhood is okay. Like, why are we being forced to be isolated from each other? Since when were men all of a sudden made to be lone wolves? when we are pack animals, we are tribal. Since, since the dawn of man, since caveman era, we worked as a tribe, as a community. 
to protect the caves that our families were in, to work together to be able to corner that brontosaurus or that saber-toothed tiger and set up a trap and attack it as a group of men and to be able to kill it and have food for weeks on end. Because one man against an animal, that man is dead. A group of men who plan, strategize, and execute are able to create an outcome. But now all of a sudden, that's considered domestic terrorism. In fact, my, my, my friend Mike Glover, who has a website called American Contingency, and I am a paying member of it. I think it's like nine bucks a month. I've been a paying member of it way before like 2020. In fact, I was a paying member of American Contingency since he launched it, 2017, 2018. He's got a YouTube show, and he's a, he's a former Green Beret and fought for our country. Today, he teaches survival skills and prep skills, right, to be prepared for a worst-case scenario, tsunami, being snowed in, power outages, whatever it is. Yet the FBI recently, just earlier last year, labeled him and his organization, American Contingency, as domestic terrorists. And all he was doing was this, he created a website where he said, look, if you want to know where other prepared men are who are part of this community, here's a place to register. And that way, God forbid, a disaster happens in your city, your state, your county. You'll know through this website and the contacts you've made who the like-minded individuals are so that you guys can come together and create shelter, have power, and help your community out while the government system tries to restore power and safety, security, whatever. Yet the Federal Bureau of Investigation labeled him this man who just wants to serve humanity in the kindest way possible as a domestic terrorist. Make no mistake about it. The nail that sticks up is getting hammered right now. And if you're like, well, this isn't affecting me right now, Bedros, what's the problem? The problem is you feel like you can't stand out. You feel like you can't exercise your voice. You can't build a platform and say what's on your mind like this. Because if you do, you might get labeled. You might get canceled. You might get the hatchet job. And so I wanted to create this show for that reason, number one. Number two, I created it for me and my son. And as a byproduct, for you. I look at all of you as my brothers. I look at you as my sons, as some of you call me dad on, on, on YouTube, or your, your uncle that you didn't have. Uh, and I appreciate that. I guess the years of gray that have come in can maybe put me in that role in life, and I'm, and I'm grateful for that position that you've put me in. But this is a message to my son, Andrew. This is a message to me. To my son, Andrew, are the lessons that I've learned over the years that I've lived and the experiences that I've gained. If you wanna know where wisdom comes from, I believe wisdom is not a byproduct of just getting old. Wisdom is a byproduct of years plus experiences. And God knows if you've watched or listened to this show long enough, you know about all of my crazy ass experiences, both personal, professional, both legal and illegal. I've opened up the kimono and I've shared it all with you. And I share it with my son here, and of course I share it with my son in person, but I put it here so that it's forever memorialized, right? And sometimes on the show, I'm talking to the older version of my son. My son who, at that, who will one day be in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and I'm talking to that version of my son. And God forbid I'm not around when he's of that age. This information is here. But also, as I'm talking to him, I'm talking to you, and hopefully you're getting value from it. Now, the reason I say I'm nervous is because to do the show right, I have to put myself out there. I have to open up the kimono and share the good, the bad, the ugly. Guys, it's not easy sitting here, looking down a barrel of a camera every week and trying to impart wisdom, trying to put notes together that's going to be processed into a message that you will understand and hopefully execute. I understand that it's so easy for the world to want to be on the other side of these cameras, on your iPhones, on your laptops, on your iPads, judging, calling names, and I've got feelings just like everybody else. Now I've got thick skin, the beauty of all these years and experiences, 
is that I've built thick skin and it doesn't impact me. And I'm massively grateful that 99.999% of the feedback, comments, messages I get are all positive. And that is not lost on me. You are the reason why I continue to do this show. My son is the reason why I continue to do this show. And when I tell you that I'm the reason why I continue to do this show, because I also need to be holding myself accountable to all the tenants that I share here. And the best way to be held accountable to something is to be able to teach it all the time. You know, at the project, I always share with the men who come to the project, I say, guys, I know you're here for 75 hours and when you graduate, we'll be working together and coaching and mentoring for another 12 months after that, really helping you break through those limiting beliefs, launch personally and professionally beyond these 75 hours. But I want you to understand the project is more for me than you, is what I tell them. And the reason I say that is because each time I'm at the project and I share lessons, experiences, cautionary tales, it reinforces to me that I must stay on the path of being a decent, solid human being. For the men that I serve, for the clients and customers, men and women worldwide that buy my products and services, from supplements to apparel, to our franchise that's worldwide, like I have to be the living embodiment of the words that I share here. And so this holds my feet to the fire because I too am susceptible to temptation. I too am susceptible to wanting to be lazy and complacent. When I'm yelling at you about not being a fat slob, and having titties that I could milk. It's because I was a fat slob, the 1.0 version of me. I was a fat kid that would come home from school and eat two or three giant bowls of cereal. I would fry a giant flat of bacon, take the bacon out, put half a dozen eggs in there, fry the eggs in that grease, and then I would eat those eggs and bacon. Now, I didn't know that was bad for me, but I was that fat kid. I did know that I should be working out in high school. I did know that I should be eating better, but I didn't know how to work out and I didn't know how to eat better, but I also didn't make the effort until the end of 11th grade to find out how. So I was that fat, lazy kid. And when I see fat, lazy men abusing their bodies who now have children, and therefore you're role modeling to your children what devastation looks like while telling your kids to eat right, to get their rest, to exercise and get good grades while you're living a life of hypocrisy. It doesn't sit with me, but I also know I'm just on the fence, man. I'm just on the fence. I'm one bad decision away from skipping a workout. I'm one bad decision away from not eating right. I'm one bad decision away from picking up another drink. And so I started this show to hold my feet to the fire. And so those are the two reasons why I started, man, because I saw where humanity is going and what masculinity is being eroded down to. And I also know that I needed to speak to myself, my son, and you. And so that's why we're here. And throughout this, this episode, you're gonna learn a lot of lessons. Hopefully these lessons land early for you. But oftentimes the lessons that I'm gonna share in here, men learn too late in life. You know, when I talk about the number one determining factor of a man's success is who he chooses as a spouse, that is a fact. That is not my opinion. That is a fact, scientifically backed up fact. And I share that with you and I see in the comments when people go, man, this guy's right, this guy's right, my ex-wife, man. Holy crap, burnt my light out, took away my passion. And I have to be the one to sit there and go, sir, you made that choice, but I appreciate you letting all the younger dudes know that I'm right because you and I now could be a cautionary tale. Like if you're a young dude, if you're 15 to 25 years old and you think that selling drugs, I don't know if kids carjack these days. I think the crimes that people do, Ed, do people carjack these days and do home invasion robberies anymore? Y'all probably just make money off like doing crazy shit off like, hey, let me scam you out of money online, right? Let me sell you some fake Bitcoins and shit. Nevertheless, it's a crime. But when I was carjacking, doing home invasion robberies, getting involved in police helicopter chases, there's nothing glamorous about that, man. What I haven't told you is I was driving around. I don't even know if I should, could say this now. I don't know. There's a statute of limitations. But I was driving around in my 79 Toyota pickup with a pistol right above my visor. There was a little section 
in my Toyota pickup right above the visor that was about three inches thick and about six to seven inches deep. And I had a pistol tucked in there because I was afraid that sooner or later, someone that I've robbed, stolen from, done bad to, was gonna come to retaliate. That is not the kind of life to live, to look over your shoulder. And I don't care if you're doing blue collar crime like that or white collar crime where you're extorting money from people or you're swindling money from people using some online scam that you think is safe for you. Let me tell you, man, some motherfucker like me will show up to your door and exact revenge. And don't think for a moment that if that motherfucker doesn't show up, that the universe won't. And let that be your first lesson here, that universal karmic justice must take place. There is always, there's always, without a doubt, a need for balance. There's the yin and the yang. There's the light and the dark. There's the summer and the winter. There must always be balance. And so there is no way you can go around extracting from humanity illegally, unethically, and then thinking that karma is not going to come back and ask for its debt to be paid. And karma shows up in the weirdest fucking ways, man. It'll show up years and decades later, just when you think you got away with the crime, it will show up. And it will show up when you're not expecting it and just when life is going well for you. And the worst type of karmic justice is when that karma shows up to the next generation, to your kids and their kids. I don't wish that upon anyone, man. I don't wish that upon anyone. Now, I know I've accumulated karmic debt in my life, early on in my life, and I work my nuts off to pay that debt back and to balance out the scales. And when I was doing bad things, I knew that I'm better than that. I knew that I had greater purpose. I knew that I was meant for more, but I constantly leaned into doing what my friends wanted. And that goes into the next lesson of this, which is a lesson that men learn too late, which is the seeking of approval and validation of others. Doing shit because you feel like your homies want you to do it, and if you don't do it, then you're a little bitch. I should have walked away and said, dudes, I'm not doing this, we're not stripping. The first fucking car that we ever stripped, before we even carjacked anyone, me and one of my friends stripped a car while it was parked in front of an apartment complex at two in the morning. It was a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. That was like the, the slippery slope that started it all. One of my homies was like, dude, you can make an easy 250 bucks if you just help me strip the parts off of that Volkswagen Karma Gear, we'll throw it in the back of my trunk, and then I'll give you 250 bucks, and then I'll go sell the parts to an auto body place that's looking for it. I'm like, that's easy enough. The car's already there, two in the morning. No one's gonna be driving off with it. Probably take us an hour or two. That led to more and more and more. So I'm here to tell you because when you are seeking the approval and validation of another man, you are no longer living congruently with the man that you want to be. So it is important for you to understand this, man. And so I started this show because I felt like men were suffering in silence. I felt like we needed to have a voice. And while there are many out there, I felt I was doing a disservice to humanity if I didn't use my platform and my ability to orate in helping amplify that voice the voice to fight the oppressor. I believe there's an opposition that's trying to oppress men right now. And it's happening in so many ways. Suicide rates across every age group of men is through the roof right now. Every age group, every socioeconomic group. That is not by accident. And now more than ever, men are isolated. They are insulated. They are suffering in silence. They feel defeated. They know they want more, but they don't know what more looks like. They don't know if more will seem like, like they're greedy. Their fire has been put out. Their light has been shut off. And I want to be the one to give you hope again. I want to be the one to let you know that you deserve your kingdom. I want you to be the one to understand that the average man inspires no one. And while the opposition wants you to stay average, to stay dependent, to stay docile, to stay dopey, the average man now is seen as this goofball dope with a dad bod 
who can't get anything right. That is not who you fucking are. You're an apex predator. You're a man that has fire, that has vision, that has inspiration within you. You've got ideas, you've got creativity, but they have extinguished your hope. They have taken away the hope. And when hope is taken away from man, he is otherwise a dead man. You may have a heartbeat, you may be walking, but you're a dead man walking. In the absence of hope, man is dead. Do you understand that? Because hope is the seed of purpose. See, a woman has factory installed purpose. She knows at some point, I'm gonna have a baby in life. And that baby is gonna grow within me for nine months. And when that baby comes out, it is my life's purpose to nurture it, take care of it, love it, show it the way for the next 18, 20, 25 years for life. I'm 48 years old and my mom and dad still hug me like I'm their baby. But my mom especially will hug me in a way that only a mom can hug. And I feel a love that only can come from a mom. Me and my siblings are my mom's purpose, her primary purpose in life. So a woman has factory installed purpose. And so I want you to understand, my friends, that the average man inspires no one, that you have higher standards and expectations, but you are being told by the opposition that it is toxic, that you should be okay with having the bare minimum, that you should be okay with being broke. You should be okay with just mediocrity. And when was that okay? I mean, fuck, Elon Musk built a rocket, put a Tesla in it, and sent the fucking thing up to Mars. Like, tell me that man's not purpose-driven. You are very closely related to Elon Musk. It's not like you're a fucking dolphin, you know. We're humans, and we're men, just like him. And if he could do that, surely you and I could do something that's more purpose-driven than sitting in our mom and dad's fucking basement playing video games, jacking off to OnlyFans, being broke and having Cheeto dust all up in your belly buttons, man. Come on. Come on. But that is how they want you to live. But now we can't blame them anymore because once you have awakened, let me explain something to you, friends. Once you have awakened, once you have opened your eyes and you realize there is an opposition and that you are being suppressed, you now have the responsibility to do something about it. You can no longer be the victim and say, I am being suppressed by the opposition and therefore I'm a victim. You now go, aha, there's rules to this game. I'm gonna figure out and win. I figured it out, Elon's have figured it out, many other people have figured it out, and it's time for you to figure it out. And that starts with you deciding that you are going to embrace hardship, that you have greater potential that you will always strive for personal excellence in life, that you will not be satisfied with the standards and expectations of average. The average man inspires no one. And when you accept embracing hardship, physically, mentally, emotionally, putting yourself through hardship, training hard, eating right, being disciplined, having life structure, eliminating negative thoughts, and people from out of your life, knowing that there is no man on the white horse that's gonna gallop in to save the day, that you are the man on the white horse and you're gonna gallop in and save your own day. You are the hero in the story. They will not save you. They want you to work a minimum surviving job, a job that will let you just survive at the minimum level to pay your taxes, to just get by, to be a cog in a wheel. And then they're hoping that you have bought into the fact that somewhere in the distant future, you will get just enough social security that you can afford a can of shitty dog food to eat out of every day while renting someone's little bedroom that they've converted from their garage. Fuck that. You are an apex predator. You are a leader. You're a fucking man who deserves a kingdom, but you've got to build it. Your story that you've told yourself doesn't matter anymore. What happened to you as a kid? You were molested, so was I. You were beaten, so was I. You're a foreigner to this country, so was I. English was not your primary language, neither was mine. But that's not the story that I tell myself anymore. I am not the kid that was molested by two older boys, and I'm not the kid that was beaten by gang members. I'm not the kid that was told to sit down and had to piss myself 
in first grade. I didn't understand the language. I stood up to walk towards the bathroom because I didn't know how to ask to use the bathroom. The teacher yelled at me and I sat back down. I was so scared and I just pissed myself because I couldn't hold my piss anymore. Do you know how embarrassing that is? Do you know the weight of that that I carried? Do you know what it takes to share that on a public platform like this so that you get a fucking message delivered to you that whatever hardships you've gone through, drug abuse, your parents have separated, alcoholism, it doesn't matter what hardship you've had, that hardship and the fact that you survived it has made you a stronger human. You've got to take that pen back and start rewriting that story instead of being a victim who has experienced all these hardships you have to be the victor who has overcome all these hardships and now you have to actively look for more hardship not by going out there and getting getting beaten and molested but by going out there and doing hard things take that six week marathon challenge that i've that i've put together for you it's absolutely free train for six weeks and run a marathon do a six week jujitsu challenge do a six week mma challenge i've done it all rock climbing surfing challenge like do anything you're not used to do hard shit go in the gym do a powerlifting meet go to a jujitsu meet right like start doing come do the fucking project become part of a band of brothers because when you do hard things you then are fortified and reinforced for the inevitable hardship that life is because all of life is hardship with brief moments of bliss my friend and if you have created a zone of comfort in a world of hardship, you become unstoppable. You become the fucking virus against the virus. I've told you this on previous episodes that when the pandemic hit, about 90 days into the pandemic, on March 16th, 2020, I announced to all Fit Body Bootcamp franchise locations worldwide that we need to shut down for two weeks to flatten the curve because at that time, we were told that this was the death virus. And then about 90 days later, as we started to lose franchise locations, as we started to see people suffering in silence, as we started to see that people were starting to financially go broke, I was like, hey, we are not going to wait for some PPP program, for some SBA loan. We are going to start attacking this virus. We're no longer going to be reactive. We're going to attack. We're going to attack. So myself, my leadership team, and my entire team here at the building, we decided that we are going to be the pandemic against the pandemic. And it is then when we started to turn the ship. It is then when we started to add more locations. It is then that we started to rebuild our brand. And it is bigger, stronger, more resilient today than ever before. You must adopt that mindset. You will not be the victim in life. Once you know that there is oppression by the opposition and you have woken up, you are fucked if you don't do anything about it. You've heard that term, ignorance is bliss, right? You've, you've heard that term, ignorance is bliss. And in a way, I believe it is because people who don't realize that, that there's consciousness and then there's like the human animal and that you are the observer through this human animal vehicle, the body, you are the observer as consciousness. You are the observer through the windows, the eyes, you observe all of life. This is just a vehicle. Like when you climb into your car, you don't become the car. You are the driver of the car. You get to dictate where the car goes. The car is the body, right? Well, consciousness is the driver. But you think that you are actually this meat sack with bones and muscles and fat and connective tissue, and you're not. You are the observer and you get to decide what the human animal does. You get to train the human animal. And when you do, that is then that you elevate to, to human being. And see, once you know this, you're like, oh shit. See, whenever I share this with people, they go, oh my God, he's right. Because the human animal is impulsive, is instinctive, is selfish, is greedy, is reactive, is emotional. Human being, guess what? Human being is enlightened. Human being is stoic. Human being is not reactive. They respond to a situation. They don't react. They think about it. They process. They take a day or two off to really let things settle and they respond in a way that ends any kind of conflict. When you react, you reactivate content, uh, uh, conflict. 
So I want you to understand that. And once you come to this understanding, you are no longer ignorant. It is no longer blissful to be ignorant, is it? You realize that, holy shit, I am the observer and I can observe what this human animal is doing. Like if all of a sudden you're craving food, you're not, consciousness is not craving food that's bad for you. Like a fucking jelly donut with a scoop of peanut butter on it. That is a human animal craving food because at the end of the day, you've had a long stressful day, you're overwhelmed, your willpower is low, and the human animal is like, I need food. I need food that's sweet and fatty because it feels good, it'll release dopamines. Consciousness needs to go, whoa, human animal, shut the fuck up, drink 30 ounces of water, go find healthy food, and then I'll give you a healthy dessert. If you wanna know, by the way, what I eat for dessert, um, eight ounces of low-fat Greek yogurt mixed with one big heaping scoop of true lean strawberry whey protein blended in there with a little sprinkle of Himalayan salt every night. Now I've got 35 grams of protein, very tiny amount of fat, and high amounts of goodness in terms of flavor, right? Because I crave a fucking donut, I crave a bagel, I want peanut butter on it, but I also know that as the human animal looking for a dopamine hit to feel good after a long stressful day of being the CEO and the visionary and the fucking leader of a big giant conglomerate. But if I keep feeding the human animal everything that the human animal wants to eat, I'll be a fat fuck, I'll be foggy headed, my life will be shortened and I'll find myself living a life of hypocrisy. I would never then get on the show and tell you a better way to operate and live and to conduct yourself because I am not living from that place. You understand that, right? So once you come to this conclusion and understanding ignorance is no longer bliss, now that you know this, and if you try and stay ignorant and you do nothing about elevating yourself to consciousness, to a higher place, guess what happens next? You start feeling anxious. You get depressed. You start feeling overwhelmed. And the reason that happens, my friend, is because once you have awakened to the realities of life, your conscience, your conscience knocks on your door by saying, hey, you know now that there is consciousness and there is the human animal. There's human being and there's the human animal and that you are the observer and that you could elevate to your 2.0 level. There are things you can do to elevate, but you're choosing not to. I'm gonna remind you by constantly showing up in the form of anxiety, depression, regret, guilt, all those feelings that you can't get rid of. And then what you end up doing is you come to a fork in the road. That fork in the road is either going to be you doing something about it, taking absolute control and responsibility and actively being a participant in the growth of your higher self, or you take the other fork in the road, which is to escape and to mask what you're feeling, the anxiety, the depression, the guilt, through alcohol, vape, pornography, TV, food, gambling, weed, whatever your form of escape is, and you're like, holy fuck, B, you are describing me right here and now. You're describing how I'm living right now. I know there's a better way. I have awakened to the fact that the opposition wants me dumb and docile and dependent and broke. I understand that masculinity has been torn out of the fiber of humanity. I understand that I can be a masculine man. I can open doors. I should open doors. I should be a gentleman. No matter what, what they say, if they call me toxic, that there is a human animal and a human being and consciousness is the observer through the windows of the eyes. And I've done nothing about it and I feel the anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel the guilt. And therefore, I shield and soothe, and I mask the pain, and I escape from it. How? Through all these vices. Through the vices that numb you temporarily, only to have you wake up the next morning and feeling shitty 
for the booze, the porn, the alcohol, the weed, the vape, the whatever the thing is. And then you've got yourself in this horrible cycle, don't you? Then instead of working out and eating right and having a structured life, instead of doing hard things mentally, physically, emotionally, challenging yourself, instead of reading books, you're screen sucking, watching social media, feeling like you're missing out on life. And then there comes that cycle of anxiety and depression on a Monday because all weekend you fucked around and you did nothing productive to add value to humanity, to society. And you know consciousness is gnawing away at you telling you, hey man, you are meant for more. You are a fighter jet, not a crop duster. A crop duster hits the snooze button. A crop duster wakes up and doesn't even get out of bed, just starts scrolling through social media. A crop duster just does what they feel like. A crop duster does what the human animal feels like doing. A crop duster follows feelings. A fighter jet follows intention. A fighter jet follows a plan. A fighter jet is a decisive motherfucker who already knows what the morning looks like and he doesn't hit the snooze button. He hops out of bed. He drinks his 30 ounces of water. He sends out his three gratitude text messages. I turn on my Jack Johnson playlist on uh, good old Spotify there. I take my shower. I go downstairs. I start working off my GSD list that I made the night before, my get shit done list. That is a fighter jet minded motherfucker because I grew up as a crop duster, friends. I was impulsive. I was reactive. I did what I felt like doing, what my feelings and emotions told me to do. And I was a fat, gelatinous little fuck of a kid. So when I'm yelling at you, I'm yelling at myself. I need you to understand that. And it's because I love you. And it's because no one else has shared this with you. And it's because I am willing to get canceled, deplatformed, or whatever the fuck has to happen if I could wake up several thousands of you who can then go and impact hundreds of others, each of you. And now we have an army of millions that have turned the tides on the fucking opposition. You and I are meant for more, man. We are meant for more. You are meant to have a kingdom, but that kingdom is a byproduct of deliberate intentional action on your part, my friend. It is to change and rewrite your story. It is to evolve, it is to heal, it is to develop self-mastery. It is to break through the seals of your limiting beliefs. It is to get out from behind your computer, behind your fucking laptop and iPhone. Get out of the virtual world and start connecting in person. This year, more than ever, I have more seminars, workshops, masterminds, and experiential events like the Project Squire Program, Masogi Challenge. I am intentionally putting together events. In fact, September 8 and 9, 2023 here, I am running a two-day high-performance seminar called the High Performance Summit. I want you to come out to it. I'm giving you plenty of heads up. I want you to come out to the High Performance Summit, and I want you to be there in person, in proximity, shake hands with others who listen to the show, who connect on YouTube, who, who are there. Because if you're hiding behind your fucking laptop and shit, you are still that lone wolf. Yes, I want you to have community where you live, where you work, but I want you to have global and national community as well. I want you to be connected and plugged in. I want you to explore. I want you to be creative. And I wanna help stoke that fire of creativity for you. September 8 and 9, 2023 in Costa Mesa, California. And don't be that person that goes, well, if you only had it here in New York, because I'm gonna tell you what, every year that I have my big mega seminars, guess what happens? People fly from England, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, South America, Africa, every Asian continent out there. And it baffles me when people go, well, you know, it's too bad it's in California. It's not like in Arizona where I live. Shut the fuck up and get on a plane, get on a bus, get in a car, get on a train. Find a way to get here. It's the fact that you make so many excuses and then you want this fucking seminar to be in your front living room that has caused you to be where you are in life. You know that, right? If you want to know what happened to men, it wasn't the opposition. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what happened to men. I'm going to lead off with this. The day that men stopped re-racking their weights in a fucking gym is when masculinity began to fall. The day that men stopped putting away the weights even if the weights were on there when you got to that leg press or chest press machine, 
If you didn't put them away, it's your fault. The day that you stop putting away the shopping cart and leaving it right there in a fucking parking spot, that's where humanity fell. The day that you started leaving garbage in your car, food wrappers, empty drink containers, that's when the slippery slope of the human animal took hold of you. The day that you began to compromise and negotiate with your goals and dreams is when the erosion of your life began. The day that you gave in and you didn't exercise your willpower on that TV show, on that food item, on making that one extra phone call that you know you should have made, that sales call, that is the day that humanity began to fall apart. It is our fault. All the opposition did is they figured out that we have these weaknesses, that we want comfort, we want convenience, and we will lean into complacency. And that is true, man. Guess what? I want a nice air-conditioned building. I want nice, comfortable clothes. I want food delivered to me. But I also realize that if I continue to give into my wants and feelings and constantly lean into the conveniences of life, the comforts of life, that I will soon erode and atrophy all of my physical, mental, and emotional muscles that keep me a hard motherfucker. And then when the hardships of life inevitably come, I won't have the mental, physical, and emotional strength and stamina to persevere. This is why I encourage you to do hard shit. This is why you must seek out hard shit because life has gotten too convenient. The comforts of convenience of the current lifestyle that we live forces us to seek out discomfort and hardship intentionally so that we can stay prepared for battle. What kind of battle be like, are we gonna grab our weapons and go to battle? No, no, the battle for life. When the bad news comes that mom or dad has cancer, when the bad news comes that your kid broke their arm, when the bad news comes that you just got laid off or fired, when the bad news comes that you're going through a divorce, when the bad news comes that you got diagnosed with something, Will you have the mental, emotional, and the physical stamina and fortitude to be able to lead yourself and your family through whatever hardship it is? When the bad news comes, you know what? Maybe, maybe, motherfucker, maybe you might have to grab a weapon or a pitchfork or a fucking piece of stick and go to battle with whoever decides to invade our great country. I don't know. They're fucking flying balloons with satellites hanging on it. What's next? Some say that World War III has started. It's just a different war. It's not missiles. It's mindset. It's the war of the mindset. They are destabilizing, demoralizing, and destroying your mind. TikTok is banned in China, but it's legal here. Like, it's crazy. And then the social media platforms they have out there, show kids doing scholastically high stuff, like doing like great science work and great math work. That's the stuff that they show on TikTok. They make that acceptable. They want that to be revered and to be complimented and to be held up on a pedestal. While here in the States, it's about some fucking fat ass chick with the booty training shoulders, but the camera angle is from her butt crack. And they entice you with that shit. It's about some stupid, it's some stupid ass meme that's not even funny but they've degenerated your intelligence, your emotional quotient so low that you think it's funny. It's not, it's not. I go to a comedy fucking store and I fucking, I'm a hard person to make laugh. And when I laugh, it's because that was a good fucking joke. It was witty, it had depth to it, it was fucking layers. I don't just laugh because the motherfuckers around me laughed. They're not intelligent. They want the cheap laugh. I want the fucking laugh where the comedian earned that laugh. Well, he set it up, he set it up, he set it up, he set it up, then he brought it back around. Boom, he hit me with the fucking punchline. That's the one I'm gonna laugh at. But you see, I've learned to think for myself. When people forward me something and go, you should watch this, it's funny, and I watch it and I go, these people are fucking degenerate. Don't ever send me this again, and now I'm gonna block you. There's nothing funny. I don't laugh just because someone said you should laugh, it's funny. I laugh if I think it's funny. Even on, on trivial things like humor, I've decided to take my own path in life and laugh at only what I think is funny. 
If there's a law that I feel is unjust, I will not obey that law. I will do what is ethically and morally right. But the law says you should do this. Fuck you. Who made the law? Greedy politicians who want to be politicians. By the way, if anybody wants to be a politician, that should be rule number one. If, if you want to be a politician, that should immediately disqualify you from being a politician. Because that tells me you want some level of control and compliance over humanity. Fuck you. You know the type of people that should be in, 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 in politics? People who are good people, who do good work, that run companies that are profitable, that have good morals and ethics, who are encouraged by their peers and friends and society, hey, our country is going to shit, our city is going to shit, our state has gone to shit, you run a great organization, your people love you, you have good character, moral, core values, do you think that maybe you can go into office, we would love to back you. Like, that's the motherfucker I want in office. Because he's like, look, I'm running my own private company, my own private organization. I'm good with my people. I got my own core values. I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to control people. I don't want to get compliance over them. I don't want to create rules that will benefit me and not them. I don't want to create more barriers and restraints for humanity. We are meant to be free. Like, what the fuck are borders anyway, right? Like, oh, Pedro, aren't you like, again? yeah, I am for shutting down the border. Yes. Yes, you know that Mexican border that's porous right now where something like, I don't know, what is it, like 80 people a day are dying trying to cross over into the United States? That is sad. That is sad. Illegal aliens, immigrants or not, that is sad. And I'm a, I'm a legal, I'm a legal immigrant. But think about this. If the world was fucking fair and just and there was no evil, there was no bad things, how fucking awesome would it be if there was no borders? But there would still be borders, wouldn't it? Because humans are fucked up. We want to create rules. You can't cross this line. This is my country now. You can't cross this line. This is my state. Fuck you. I'm a human. Like, what? A, a bear or a gazelle or a lion can't just cross a fucking state line or a city line. You're going to give it a ticket. You're going to give it a citation. You're going to pull it over. What the fuck? Right? We're no different. We are products of this earth. We are citizens of this earth. We are brothers and sisters. That is why I created the show, to bring unity, to wake you up, to give you hope, to let you know that the feeling that you have in your gut that you deserve more, that you should expect more, that you should want more, higher standards, that is not wrong. That it is okay to make a lot of money and do a lot of good with it. Be good with your money. Be generous with your money and explode your money. Make a lot of it. Be fit. Have awesome and amazing experiences. Fly first class. Fly private. Live in castles like I did with my family when we went to Scotland. We lived in fucking Edinburgh Castle. Fuck staying at a five-star hotel. I want you to fucking stay in a castle and to give that experience to others. That is what you feel, Right? You're like, I know I'm meant to inspire others. I know I'm meant to help people. Yes, do it. You do that by first helping yourself. Create financial freedom. Create physical freedom. Create mental freedom. Begin to question authority. Become a free thinker. Set high standards. Pay it forward to others. Solve your life's problems yourself. Figure shit out. There is no one man that you ought to put on a pedestal ever, ever, ever. Don't walk around trying to put your fucking umbilical cord into someone else's belly button. No one man has the power or control over you ever, ever. There is no one man that should be put on a pedestal. You are the man that goes on the pedestal. You are the fucking top G, right? You are it. You are the fucking man. What you feel is accurate. It's unfortunate that you act upon what they tell you, which is, whoa, 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 slow down, be careful. They want to make you a crop duster. They want to de defang you, declaw you. They want to take the lion that you are and put you behind a cage and feed you some low quality meat three times a day in a controlled environment. You ever go to the zoo and you look at the fucking lion, he's just laying there? Yeah, it's got a pulse, yeah, it's got body heat, dead eyes, laying there, not doing what a fucking lion does, which is to chase, which is to be chased which is to explore, which is to hunt, which is to fuck. Like that is what you're meant to do. But what's stopping you? What's stopping you is the story that you keep telling yourself, the victimhood that you keep accepting, 
And that is what this show here is meant to do. It is to help you build your kingdom. It is to help you realize that you are meant to be a good man, not a nice guy, but a good man. Pedros, what do you mean by that? What's the difference between a nice guy and a good man? You see, a nice guy, as told by Robert Glover in his book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, the nice guy from No More Mr. Nice Guy, the book, he's that passive aggressive man. He's that guy who doesn't follow his dreams. He's that guy who accepts everything that is thrown at him and doesn't set boundaries. He's that guy who sees himself as a victim. He's that guy who feels like his fire is snuffed out. He, he, he relates more to Al Bundy. Look up Al Bundy if you're young. If you haven't seen the show Married with Children. He was this big dopey dad who couldn't get anything right. That's the nice guy. The passive aggressive guy who just has given up on his dreams and hopes. You need to be a good man. A savage and a servant. That is a good man. A lion and a lamb. A protector, a provider. A man who wants to build and develop his kingdom. A man who wants to serve his community. A man who is willing to stand in the gap between good and evil. A man who is willing to be a gentleman, who's willing to be chivalrous. A man who can take his, his daughter around on date night and then tear the fucking heart out of a bad guy in the very next minute. That is a good man. A man who's got a moral and, and core character values that are true north. A man who is undeniably proud of himself. He is proud of the man that he is. He admires the man that he has become. He continues to do the work to become higher self. He continually is connected to source, to the universal consciousness, to God, because he realizes there's a higher power, whatever your version of that higher power is, that you are God-like, you are a creator. You are not meant to be a consumer. I want you to be a good man and not just a nice guy. And if you're willing to do that, then you might be asking me, well, now what, Bedros? Now what? I understand the purpose of this show. I understand that you're here to help us and give us some guidance towards building confidence so that we're no longer imposters. Like, look, man, I felt like an imposter for so long. I remember feeling like an imposter and a hypocrite because I lived my life impulsively, yet I expected the people around me to have their shit together. And I was shocked and offended when they didn't have their shit together. And so then I would get passive aggressive with my employees. I was a nice guy, right? And it wasn't until I started to build my own confidence by stacking an undeniable amount of proof and evidence that I'm a fucking champion. And the only way you can stack an undeniable amount of proof and evidence that you're a fucking champion is that you stack big wins, little wins, medium-sized wins, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. That is the only time that you will begin to silence your inner bitch, that negative critic within you who tells you you can't, who doubts you, who says you're not made for this. You can, you can absolutely silence your inner critic. You can absolutely silence the devil within. But the only way that happens is by stacking an undeniable evidence, undeniable level of evidence that you have kept your promises to yourself, that you will start something and you will finish it. That is the only time that you become the 2.0 level version of yourself. So what now, my friends? Here we go. Do the self work. Do the self work. Emotionally, mentally, physically, do the self work. Make the money. Become the greater human. Be the savage, be the servant. Become human being and kill your inner human animal. Get outside, connect, create, explore, find and win your financial freedom. Become a stoic warrior. Get lean and jacked. Become battle ready, the battle for life. Raise good children. Make better decisions. Understand that you are in charge of your choices. No one else is in charge of your choices. 
You control your choices, your effort, and your attitude in life. Those are the three things that you can control without doubt. Everything else around you can go wrong, but you can control your choices, your effort, and your attitude. Love up your family. Love up your family. I can't imagine that someone died on their deathbed and they said, man, I should have played more video games as they were dying. I should have hung out with my retarded homies more. I should have made more money. Like the only regret people have is that I didn't spend more time with my family. I didn't love up my family more. The love wasn't deep enough. And if you can learn these lessons, these, these lessons so early on in life before it's too late, then you can go and infect others because that's how the show works. I need you to understand something, my friend. This show is not the Bedros Koulian show by himself. This is our show together. Everything you learn from this show and every way that you evolve from this show, you've got a duty and an obligation to pay it forward to someone else, to your kids, to your spouse, to your brothers, to your friends, to your coworkers. You must become the change that you want to see in the world. You can't be like, yay, I do three gratitude text messages. I make more money than ever. I have better time management and productivity. I have better self-talk. Thank you, Bedros. Well, fuck you, motherfucker. Go pay it forward now, right? Go pay it forward. So guys, I want you to understand that above all, if you've read my book, you're gonna understand this. If you've read my book, Man Up, you're gonna understand what I'm about to say. I want you to understand above all, never peak in life. Never peak. Don't ever get to that place where you go, well, man, I've peaked and I'm 40 years old. Fuck that. Never peak. The best is yet to come. You know that line from my book. And that line is very true. Continue to evolve. Continue to grow. Continue to love. Continue to explore. Continue to earn. Continue to change. Continue to impact. Continue to touch more lives. Because you, my friend, are an agent of change and we are doing this together. We are a fucking tribe. We are a community. And the only way our community is going to be able to impact the world and create the change that we want to see in the world is if each and every single one of you, if each and every single one of us go and impact more lives. And you don't do that, by the way, by just saying, hey, you know, uh, you ought to go do this. First way you do that is you become the role model. You role model. You become a role model of what a fucking awesome man is. And people will start taking notice. Like that guy, he's fucking got swagger. That guy, he's fucking got the juice. One role model what a successful, good man is. Number two, if this episode or any of my episodes added value to your life, really gave you food for thought, gave you some tools, tactics, strategies to become the better man, the better human that you want to be, then share it. Share it with some men in your life. Pay it forward. Guys, I hope I could see you out there September 8th and 9th. By the way, the website is not up yet, so don't ask where do you go to register. We will let you guys know once the website is up. I'm just giving you so much head start on the High Performance Summit, September 8th and 9th in beautiful Costa Mesa, California, right out here. We get to meet up and hang out in person. It's gonna be a one hell of a fucking two-day event, and I'm bringing some amazing top-notch speakers as well. I'm gonna be doing a lot of time teaching from the stage, and then, of course, connecting, networking, and shooting the shit with you guys. But until then, I want you to understand one thing and one thing only and that is that average is the enemy that success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch